Welcome back to the Totally Wicked Stadium. It is St. Helens taking on the Salford Red Devils. Your commentators are Mark Wilson and Kyle A. Moore. You can go, boys. Go, go, go. The smell of deep heat is suffocating here. Good luck, all. Yeah, welcome along to the Totally Wicked Stadium and a history making day for a Saints legend. Row B9, you'll see the signs around the stadium here. And there'll be a guard of honour for the new St Helens leading appearance maker. It's appearance 532 for James Roby this afternoon, overtaking the great Kel Coslett's record. And the teams and the fans and rugby league in general, there he is, not just a modern-day hero, but a genuine rugby league legend. The crowd are waiting him out here. How fitting he makes that record-breaking record appearance here. He's got a smile on his face. Wait on you, Matt. Yeah, wait on it. And the ground awaits the great James Roby. With virtually everything there is to win in the game. The specially embroidered shirt as a memento for him. Five hundred and thirty second appearance for him. So James Robbie then waiting to come out. Never lost on this ground to Salford. He'll be keen to keep that record intact as well. There's a video of his success-laden career on the screen here at the ground. The all-time Super League record making appearance maker as well career he's had and he'll be determined to end it on a high here he comes listen to the noise here all the applause of crowd they love him here in these parts and they'll certainly miss him when his career does come to an end but there's plenty of business to be taken care of including getting St Helens Back to winning ways. Five defeats in their opening ten this season. As both teams welcome him onto the field. And they don't welcome once he's got the ball in his hand. I can guarantee you that from Salford. But when you think of the proud history of this St Helens club, the fact that Roby is now their leader. is a tremendous achievement. So, about to get underway here then. Salford looking to join the group of teams, just four points behind leaders, Warrington. Chris Kendall, our man in the middle. So, Salford then to get us underway here. Paul Rowley's side have won their last four. And we're about to get underway in the Betfred Super League. St Helens against the Salford Red Devils. And Wormsley will bring it forward for Saints. Salford looking to put the squeeze on early on here. And pen St Helens back inside their own 20. Working its way centre field. Costello, the former Saints player, in with a tackle. And Roby gets the ball away to Lomax, who has a little step. Lomax almost up to the 30, and the first blow of the whistle goes the way of St. Helens. An attempted ball steal there from the Salford Red Devils. And uh, Partington had hands on the ball. Kyle Amore alongside us. Fitting tribute for your former teammate James Roby. A wonderful career, not yet over, but a, a wonderful occasion for him. Oh, yeah, for sure, Mark. Good afternoon to you and everyone at home. 
That man there, James Roby, overseeing Kel Coslett. 532nd appearance, an incredible number given the modern day game as well. So six in with the first attacking chance, 40 metres out. All centre field, Bell will just tip it on. Roby again looking around him now, we'll go to the left hand side. Ball dropped back on the angle. We'll be glad to see Surinan back in the Saints team, missed the last three. And the ball now swings its way centre field. Bell head rocks back in the tackle. About 25 away from the line here. And the ball now coming across, turned back inside. Good tackle from Salford, defending well here. They've got to defend this last tackle option. They're coming short side with Wellsby. Wellsby's going to pop the kick through. It's picked up by Briley, who just for a moment looked as though he was going to try and go round the defender. He didn't have a lot of room to work in, but Salford defended that set pretty well. Yeah, perfect start for them. A delicate little kick from Wellsby. Ryan Briley in the right position, like all good fullbacks are, just to deny that threat. And Costello, a former St. Helens player himself, advances 20 metres away from the line mark. Salford not won here 43 years since they last won in St. Helens. They've never won here in the Super League here, obviously, on the back of that. What a time to put it right. This would be as Croft almost made a break over on the far side. Last one, though, the 30 off their own line. It's a pretty scruffy play of the ball, and Mark Steed's kick goes high, and Makinson is going to stand underneath this, has to dive to catch it in the end. That will allow Salford chance to get to him, but he skips past one and realises he's got to get back in field. But Saints have it just short of the halfway, and a big win for them defensively. Yeah, solid enough there. 30 metres gain from Salford. There's the kick pressure that Lewis Dodd puts on Mark Sneed. Mark Sneed will kick the ball more than any other in this contest today. Matty Lee's charging forward. He's been in terrific form too. Probably been Saints' best middle. It's a Salford player down. I think it's Dupree who's injured on the floor at the moment. Salford at the moment down to 12 in their line. Dupree's trying to make his way back now. Roby goes centre field. Short pass at the line. There's a chance for the break here, but the offload doesn't come from Lees on this occasion. Last one. Salford back defending their own line. Roby this time goes. Wellsby with a short ball. And again, Salford defending well. A bit put under pressure early on the Red Devils. Well, they've come up with the answers so far. Yeah, super tackle there. Brody Croft. A mismatch in size, but not in bravery. Brody Croft denies the big Australian bat roller. There's an opportunity now for Saints to ramp up defensively like they so often do. But Bachelor called not square there, just allows that little triangle to be created and Shane Wright pokes his nose through. All 30 away from the Salford try line. And now Ackers. And Salford lost in the opening couple of minutes here in the semi-final last year. It was a cruel blow for Salford Salt of making it to a second Super League Grand Final. And now they've made a break. They go straight through the middle. Muniyawa looking for support, gets it away. And Brody Croft going for the line. Is he going to get there? He's over. Brody Croft, has he got injured? Well, they're going to check this one. Did he get the grounding? Great break up the middle from Muniyawa. And the referee thinks it's a try on the field, sure but he wants to check the ground. It let's hear from the video referee. Tackle four, and the line decision is a try on field. So we're just looking to confirm Brody Croft does maintain possession of the ball. You can see he's in possession at this point. He's still in possession. Hands are on the ball there. Hands are always on the ball. Continue playing. Hand is on the ball. Still on the ball. Still on the ball and that touches the line. Thank you, I made my decision. So, Brody Croft has broken the deadlock. He missed out here in the semi-final last year through injury, but he's back here with a bang, and Salford had to defend early on, and this is all about the bust up the middle. Yeah, it's a super short, soft pass from Oli Partington. King Vuniawawa arriving at speed and in support, Brody Croft. T. Ritson tries his very best, but I have to say, Mark, this is a soft try. Gets in between Lees and Siridan. And Vuniawawa just holds that ball, slows his pace down, and Croft is able to score a pretty easy try. Blistering start from Salford. 6-0. Yep, pretty straightforward kick for Mark Sneed. 
who doesn't miss too many, and he's not going to miss from there. And six points to nil in favour of the Red Devils. Just look at the pass there, go straight in. Into the eye line of Matty Lees, Curtis Siridan. Just gets caught. It's a terrific try for the Salford club. Brodie Croft so instrumental for Salford last season. The Man of Steel, of course. And he was cruelly denied that semi-final appearance last season. But when he's fit, Salford are an entirely different proposition. Yeah, they certainly are. That combination, Sneed and Croft, so pivotable, so pivotable, sorry, in everything good that Salford do. And there's a mouth-watering clash, isn't there? Brodie Croft and Johnny Lomax, two of the very best in the British game, going at it. There's six again there from Dupree. Well, here with Sneed, they're going to move it wide now to this left-hand side. Lovely bit of skill and almost away. And now they're coming back for a penalty. Chris Kendall spotted a late hit there on Briley. So despite the fact that Costello was almost away, they'll come back here. And there it is, the tackle, Makinson it was. Yeah, hits him late. You can't argue with that. I think it is very late. But the threat there that Salford show, they are willing to throw the ball around more than any other team. They sliced up through the middle of the field earlier on for that try, but they showed the threat when they moved the ball. And a penalty given away off the back of it. And the great thing, Kyle, they just back their skill, don't they? Paul Rowley trusts them to execute their skill, and they're prepared to throw it around. We say throw it around, they know what they're doing. Exactly. You know, they are a terrific side to watch. They play the game, especially in conditions like today. Play it in a way that a lot of fans admire and respect. And it's a lovely day for the spectators. I'm not so sure it's as lovely for the players themselves. Here's Sneed now. Gets it away. Chance for Stone. Sidesteps his way past one. He's been a good recruit from late. Going well for the Red Devils. Akers jumps out at dummy half. Gets it away now. They'll move it across his space out wide if they can get it there. Briley now has it. He gets it away to Cross. Cross is going to be wrapped up. 25 away, but the Red Devils already looking to add to their early six-point advantage. Ball with Croft, had to wait for a loopy pass. Taken forward now at the middle. And Saints happy just to hang on at the moment as Akers explodes out of dummy half, gets it away. Nowhere to go there. And this is the last one, it's a slow play of the ball. St. Helens just trying to contain Salford, who will go down the short side. Briley Dummies gets it out the back. Watkins kicks too much on it. Saints survive, but Salford looking threatening. Yeah, just down that right edge there. I think if Watkins has his time again, he just gets tackled in the corner. That kick on that was just too much. Gives a seven tackle reset. Restart. T. Ritson taking the ball forward. Stand! Oh, God. Been an interesting start to the season for St Helens. Obviously, they won the World Club Challenge live on Channel 4 at the start of the season, but five wins, five losses so far for them, very unsaints like. Just early warning signs here that they're not going to have it all their own way today. Paul Rowley's side come here full of confidence. But Saints are up towards the halfway line. And Roby, the record breaker, gets the ball away. Dodd moves it wide, Lomax trying to weave his way through, he's wrapped up on the 40-metre line. Quick play of the ball, back to the centre they come. Wellsby looking busy, tries to find a gap, they almost got through there. Bachelor wrapped up, last one, Roby jumps out of dummy half. Wellsby now runs and then floats the kick over, but Briley's there, right place again to pick it up. And at the moment, the last tackle options from St Helens are not quite on the money. No, they're certainly not, and just a nice take there from Ryan Brayley. You know, you go back to this Saints side, you mentioned there, Mark, that they just haven't quite got going. There is a performance in there, there's no doubt about that. They showed that here a fortnight ago against Warrington. And Salford looking to move the ball over on that far side of the field. Oh, they thought about the offload. That would have been risky from Cross. And now, jumping out of dummy half is Williams. But just on Salford as well, they're chasing the fifth win in a row. The last time they did that, Mark, 2019 and we all know how that ended up these two sides challenged it out in the grand final the signs are good at Salford at the moment on the last one they're up to the 40 Croft will thump it downfield looking to find the grass they let it bounce 
It's picked up and here now, returning the ball will come Wellsby. Wellsby trying to get to an edge. Tackle made, 25 away. It won't be 10 minutes from the Red Devils, they lead by six. There's a ball carried, it's going to be a set restart. Hopoate is wrapped up. Oh, fizzed across the uh, front of Bell. Did well to hang on to that one. <laughs> and his pass this time a little bit more sedate, but a good tackle round the legs from Akers. England international at the World Cup as Roby gets it away. Lees is wrapped up. King, all the way. King, you're off. King, you're off. Working the middle of the field is Wormsley. Runs through the eye, obviously had the shot, he was offside, didn't make the tackle, and the line is busted down, here comes St Helens, Surinam moves it out wide, big chance in the corner, is that a flying finish for Ritson? Did he get this down? Referee's going to check it. They created the gap, Vuniawa was offside in the line. We have a try. And the referee Check thinks this is a spectacular T. Ritson finish for St Helens. Okay, Let's find four. out. The live decision's a try. So we're just looking at touchline grounding, please. So Ritson's in possession at this point. His feet are in the air uh, at this point now. So continue playing. Live decision's a try. So where's the ball? And keep on rolling it now. So feet are in the air, I'm happy with that. Still in possession. Still in possession. The flag doesn't count at this point as he's in possession, so where does he ground the ball? Yeah, he grounds the ball on the in-goal line. Thank you, I've made my decision. Well, they say that life is a game of inches, and that was not inches, it was millimetres away from being a wonderful finish in the corner. He didn't look convinced, did he, T. Ritson? I think he knew himself he hadn't quite grounded the ball in the field of play, but he couldn't have come much closer. What an effort that was. I was just going to say, Mark, Ryan Briley's effort to get across and make sure that he gets something on T. Ritson. Those are the things that feature heavily the next day when you review the game back. A super effort from the fullback to deny Ritson that try. He went for the spectacular finish, had to as well. And the field, like you mentioned, Mark, was just 10 centimetres too shy. Great effort. There's the effort from Briley. Maybe just that push was just and enough. That's all he needed. He just needed to be there. Just needed the effort. Those type of finishes just becoming trademark in the Super League now and throughout rugby league in general these days. And probably feel he should have scored T. Ritson. Such are the standards that these outside backs have. But he didn't. And Saints are still behind. Here now. The ball carried forward ball. by Stone James over the halfway line. Akers waits, gets it away. Ball carried forward by Dupree, looks for the offload. It wasn't clean, and now it's going to be picked up by St. Helens. And Bachelor streaks away. And that was a loose offload there from Dupree. Yeah, just didn't quite find where it needed to be. Bachelor, quickest one to react, gets on it. And the blink of an eye, they're back under, the, back under pressure now, Salford. Saints just starting to enjoy some better territory with the ball in hand. Can they level things up here in the sun in the northwest of England? Lucky there, Salford, they didn't concede another penalty. As Bell just straightens things up, he's hauled to the ground, 20 away. Roby looks on. Goes to his left, gets the ball away. Good read from Croft, didn't quite make the tackle, but did enough to stop the danger. And this is the final one. Centre field, options either way, they'll go to Wellsby now, he's going to dribble the kick through it, wrong foot's Briley, but they were back there in numbers, and it's going to be a goal line drop out, a bit of messing about behind the try line, and unnecessary push maybe there. It's a goal line drop out. Ryan Briley certainly brave on the last on the first two, and on that one he just sees Alex Wormsley charging at him, pulls out of it, and James Bell does well to react to trap the Salford player, in goal. Yes, yeah, Partington who was there sweeping up, but he didn't like the reaction to Bell's tackle. And oh, to be fair, he's looking there that, that first swing missed. Former Wigan player, of course, Partington, so they won't like him in these parts. The goal line dropout caught by Ritson, who brings it back across the field. 
trying to find a gap in that sofa defense, but he only finds a shoulder. Well, we've yet to see T. Ritson find space in a Saint shirt. He has blistering pace, Mark. There's no doubt about that. We've covered a lot of games in the championship and seen that. 70 tries in over 70 games for Barrow. Centre field. And now the ball working its way. Wells been a low match. They jumped out of the line but didn't make the tackle, but Burgess did well. Costello, it was a race out. But just signs that Saints are starting to find a few gaps now. Can they open up their account? Wormsey carries strong. And he's tackled six metres away. Roby will now get the ball away. Salford short of numbers on that far side, but they managed to make the tackle, but they're offside. They were short of numbers there, and I think they realised it and decided that conceding the penalty was better than conceding the try. I think Lewis Dodd wanted to play that a bit earlier, but due to that rushing right edge defence that was offside, he steps back in field. Gives a penalty away. Well, the referee here is um, just asking for the medic to come on. Might be a bit of blood somewhere. Curtis Siren's not quite sure what's going on. It's James Roby. It's Roby who's getting some treatment. There you go. 532nd game in. Still getting busted and banged about. Blood on the shirt, but I think he's going to be allowed to carry on. It's masked by that famous red V. Back and Roby will offside. tap the ball here as Saints look to level things up. Bell with a carry. Oh. Salford doing down. plenty of defending Two. here early on. Can they hang on? As again they come racing out on Lomax, and again they don't quite get him, but they did just enough there. Over here. Over here. Works its way back centre of the field. Short pass to Warms. He's trying to power over the top of Partington. Did he slide towards the line? Not quite over it though. And they'll play it just a metre away. They're going for the power play, but Salford were ready for that. Good goal line defence. A metre away. The champions knocking on the door. They're going to come wide this time. They're going to poke the kick in behind. Bradley will let that go. That's a wonderful goal line stand from Salford. Renowned for their fluidity in attack. But that was sheer hard work and guts. And now the quick tap and they're away. Well, they say his players... They're all in back play screaming about Johnny Lomax getting taken out off the ball. It's Max Knee just turns his body round and just stands still. I think you're allowed to do that. He doesn't advance towards Lomax to take him out, he just holds his ground. Let's have another look at it. Ooh, well maybe. But it matters not now, it's play on. It is play on, and Salford will take great pride in the fact that their line is still intact. 16 gone, they lead by that Brody Croft try. Here is Croft. Oh, there's just a threat as well, Mark. Stepping hard off that right foot, Brody Croft trying to catch a big man, just working overtime. Akers to Briley, Briley with a short pass to Watkins, oh. back to Briley, and they're over again. Salford moving the ball downfield, and they have a second try. The goal line stand at one end, leads the points at the other. Briley's over, Salford lead 10-0. It's a brilliant try as well on that right side. Croft. Watkins, Briley, all combining. Saints fans might be feel that the hard done to there. On that evidence, it looks like Mark Sneed does actually step in, lift his elbow up slightly. But three or four players later, it goes to the line. Ben Davis just gets caught far too ahead. Watkins, Briley back inside. And Salford at the moment, Mark, they just can't stop scoring. That little pump there just does Dodd and Davis. And Briley supporting like he's done for so, so many of his 200 and now 18th try. In 278 games, a prolific try scorer across Super League and the Championship. He goes in for his fourth try of this season. Well, it ends a seven-match drought without a try for Briley, as he said, so prolific. But he's always going to be on the end of moves like that. He scored here in the semi-final last year, and he scored again here today. And you just wonder if the Sneed adds the extras, if Salford's 43-year wait for a win against St Helens in St Helens yeah. is about to come to an end because they've made a great start at both ends of the field. Put a little deception from Ackers. Briley does so, so well. He just pumps the ball and he just sends Lewis Dodd rocking on his heels.
Ben Davis gets up far too interested in the man out the back. Short ball to Watkins. And he just sliced through another hole. That's a couple of line breaks on Saints now that isn't very much like St. Helens. Two tries they've scored. have been disappointing. Well, they have from a St. Helens perspective. But the champions here need to find some answers. And they're not used to losing too many games, let alone in the season. Not just after 11 rounds, as the kick goes high, I just think Salford have it. One of St. Helens' biggest problems at the Whoa. moment is they just miss far too many tackles. It was only Castleford and Hull who were missing more than them, and we can see how their seasons are going at the moment, but so often they just missing far too many. Salford have it, and again they're looking to come wide here to Snee, gets it to Bradley, they've got numbers again here, Bradley gets it away, ball out wide, Burgess didn't have too much room, has to cut back inside, and you wonder there, maybe the ball could have gone to Burgess a bit earlier. Perhaps so, but just smart, set up the points, just get through your set, tackle three now, crossing over the 40, they're looking to move it again here. And they are, and again they've got to the edge, and again they've got numbers, this time they get it to Williams, Williams thinks about going down the outside and thinks, mm, maybe can't outpace Ritson these days. Please. Throw the ball from one side of the field to the other, and let me tell you, as a middle player, it just saps all the energy out your legs, constantly moving over, that's a great oh, shot, what a tackle that is, Johnny Lomax. He sits part in the down, cuts him in half. Wait, wait, wait. Let's him know about it after as well. And now the kick outside, comes in, and it's a oh, kick yes. that will be gathered by Wells be inside his own ten. The Salford chase, a good one, and they make the tackle ten away. You talk about completing sets after points. I don't think Salford do just completing sets. They're always looking to challenge. It's so good to see, so exciting to watch. Yes, but they are smart players. You know, Paul Rowley's assembled the side that know when to pull the trigger and know when not to. I just think on that occasion, you know, perhaps he could have given the ball early, but he didn't. And look where they are now. Well, on a very similar day to this last season, they put 44 oh, points on Bruce St. Helens in. at the AJ oh, Bell. They pushed Saints twice close here in the league and in the playoffs as Wormsley's wrapped up. Last one, he's trying to crawl forward, but he needs to play the ball. It'll go back here to Dodd, who's outside the 40, swirls the kick downfield. Briley waits, catches it on the full, gets the big pass away to Williams. Williams now trying to get to that edge, he's wrapped up 25 away. But at the moment, Salford, halfway through this first half, you feel at the moment they're in complete control. Well, they'll be delighted for sure. 12-0 up on the scoreboard away from home. Need another step. And haven't really had to do too much in terms of defending. They're defending the line once or twice, but by and large, the game's kind of been played in this middle, this middle third of the field. Four, carry forward there. Square. Go forward, run, right, right off the bench. Ackers kicks low past Wellsby. He'll pick it up on the second bounce. Dummies to Ritson, now I give it back to Ritson, but there's a wall of red in front of him and there's nowhere to go, but that will help. A high shot there. And Wright will be disappointed with that. He's had a fantastic season. He'll be disappointed with that tackle on. Yeah, T. Ritz in there, just scouring the line, trying to find a bit of space. Picks Partington and Wright. And gets one round the chops for measure. And Saints needed that. Wright fresh onto the field. Just getting some treatment. Here it is again, Ritson. It's just that late change of angle there. Skimming across the field sideways, steps in, wins his side of the penalty. He's explosive when he gets in the loose, but right, chopped him down illegally there. And this will be a penalty and a relieving penalty as well for St. Helens. They are going to kick for touch. Just a word on the conditions today. I mean, it's a lovely day here in the northwest, Carl, but from a player's perspective, it's been quite cold, hasn't it, during the season so far? How different is it as a player when you're playing in the heat like this? Yeah, it is, look, but, you know, the guys have been training all week, and it certainly does feel like it's a lot warmer now, but you're heading in, and that's a bad error there from Matty Lees. It really is. He just snatches at the ball. And just when you feel that Saints could start to build a bit of pressure, just takes his eye off it. 
I mentioned earlier, Matt, he has been Saints his best. He's played huge minutes. He tops the tackle count, 38 tackles on average. Matty Lees does the game. He's not shy of work. Going to be disappointed with that one. There's a problem here for Salford. They've got a player down. Getting treatment. It's like a, a lower right ankle problem, potentially. Let's see if we can right. pick this one up again here. Oh, well. Lee's having dropped the ball, then dropped right. What do we make of this one? Just get. Oh, his That's ankle it. caught underneath him. That's horrible. Oh, he's been hit. What a double whammy there. Well, Lees has been called out here, and the referee's going to have a word with him. Salford fans are not happy. Well, I've, de I've dealt with them too Sometimes these things so iron themselves out. Yeah. Saints fans might think yeah, that perfect. Johnny Lomax get take off the ball or try up the other end, and I think Lees is quite lucky there. Well, I think as well, Shane Wright's incredibly lucky because another millimetre or so on that ankle would have been busted. He might be in trouble as it is. Perhaps so. But that could have been a whole lot worse, and it looks like he is going to have to leave the field. So that is a blow for the Salford Red Devils, and the fans now, their anger grows that they feel there was a little bit of foul play. Well, there looked to be a little bit of foul play in that one. Yeah, I think Matty Lees is just trying to advance to the ball, thinking that Shane Wright's going to pick it up and try and make a tackle. You're talking fractions of a second. But the oh, penalty is given, and rightly so. Sneak going to take his time here. The breaking player, welcome yeah, one for the players. It's been a high-paced start to this game. You get to see Salford really, Mark, with a full good ball set. They haven't needed one, have no. they? Dupree comes back on then. He was one of the subs that made way earlier on, but he's back into the action now. Ball works its way to Sneed. Here is Dupree. He's having a great season, and he got that England call up and deserved the salt. Just saw a lot of good stuff through the middle of the field, him and Partington. Here's Croft, gets it away to Briley. Briley sidestepping, but wraps up this time. And Cross looking to get through the gap, but the gap closed up before the pass was made. And here's Callum Watkins. Are well, they going to add another try? An increase their 12 point advantage here at the home of the champions. Here's Croft now, goes short. Dupree, they had numbers out the back there, Salford, but they didn't overplay it. And Akers waits. Gets it away to Croft, Croft to Briley now. Ball over the top for Williams. Williams going for the corner. Can't quite get there, but the pass was forward anyway. I think the touch judge had an input into that one on the far side, but it did look a forward pass. But it's another oh, chance that goes begging for Salford. That's a chance created. And just watch what Brody Croft does. The pass before that, before Ryan Briley gets his hands on it. Brody Croft, he does this so, so well. He digs right into the line, releases Briley, and creates that space out wide. And the pass was forward. One well, of another opportunity there created for Stewart. But again, I'll go back to Croft as a half back, takes the ball right to the line as far as he can in. Down. Don't go just creates there. space for so many others on his side. Ball oh. oh, come out of the scrum, Saints have it. Wrong end of the field as far as they're concerned, but they'll be happy to get it. Look at that, 58% possession so far for Salford. They were in front on that stat and on the most crucial one, the one on the scoreboard. Two tries for Croft and Briley. Have the Red Devils in control at the moment, but Saints score next, and they're right back in this contest. Plenty of time left yet. Yeah, ball back for Batchelor. Batchelor's had a, an injury hit start to his campaign, so it's good to see him back out there. And the ball here with Bell. Bell carries it to the line, gets a pass away. They were trying to offload it, and that's been lost by St. Helens. Wormsley couldn't get the ball away cleanly, and Salford players celebrate, they're getting the ball back. Yeah, just offloaded it in an impossible position, it's never on. He has to know to keep hold of that for an experienced fella like him. It's a poor error. It can be in times like this that the more you feel it's going against you, the harder you feel you've got to try, and sometimes you just got to stick to the basic game plan, don't you? Yeah, for sure. Look, there's still 15 minutes left on the clock. 
saw the last time Saints had that ball off the penalty. Player one, an error, and just there through the centre of the field. Has to keep hold of that. Here now is Snee, gets it out wide. Snee will play the ball eventually on this near side. This was just looking around him. Good shot goes in there on Costello. Now the ball centre field carried forward. Gerard on off the bench. He'll take it up Burns. the middle. Move our legs, James Bath. Zakas looks in front of him. What's ahead? He fancies a little dart out of dummy half. Gets it away. Good hands finds Croft. Croft short and again Salford had created numbers. But they went with a lead runner rather than to Briley. They're going to go down that side again. Croft gets it away this time. Cross steps in. Can he offload it? Well, there's going to be another penalty here. And Brody Croft at the moment is proving a little bit too hot for St Helens to handle. Well, discipline and errors are killing Saints at the moment. Ackers, watch how great and long Croft takes it into the line. Curtis Siridan, he just can't help it. He's already committed and he hits him late. Again, errors and penalties are really hurting Paul Wallen's side at the moment. This is going to be an interesting decision here. Listen, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Grab Chris that. Kendall. Yeah. But there's one, the, yeah, but there's one the tackle before as well that He's I've run with. Him, yeah, no, no, listen. All right, okay, so you don't, you don't want to listen. Okay, I'll speak to James. All right, thanks. Yeah, and I understand what you're saying, but we've got too many of these now. 50-50s. Players getting taken late. Just let's just. No, it wasn't. I agree, but let's just tidy this area up. Yeah. Fine margins. I mean, you made a great point earlier on. Brody Croft goes into the line. It almost is too tempting, man. You know, as a big man, you want to impose yourself. You want to do the right things. You can't slide off him because of his running threat. And when he takes it right into you, it's just too tempting. You're talking fractions of a second again. Once you're committed, it's so hard to pull out. And the referee said there, there's far too many 50-50s. Lumsley has left the field for St Helens, gone for a head injury assessment. Lou McCarthy scars were come for him. Here come the flick pass, lovely pass. Costello gets it to Burgess. Burgess will cut back in, bounces off one, but the tackle made. But again, Salford finding joy on the edges as a theatrical fall there from a Saints player. I think he's going to earn himself a penalty. Back to it was, there's a bit of pushing and shoving. Costello, the former Saint, involved. Well, that was more akin to a fall you'd see on the football field, not a rugby field, but giving the ball away, a penalty in possession is criminal. Yeah, Paul Roll will be absolutely furious with this. Matty Costello there, couldn't quite see what happened. I think he was hitting his Burgess, Burgess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Everyone come running in and grabbing all the Costello. <laughs> Must be thinking, what have I done? Maybe guilty by association there, but Saints get the ball on halfway. Roby gets it away. Good run forward there. When they're inside the 40. They'll play it now with McCarthy Scars with the veteran. Gets it away. Lomax short pass to Siren and he's tackled well. Salford looking to just try and control the speed of the play of the ball as Bell works the middle of the field. He can't offload it. You get the feeling that they'll need one back before the break, St Helens. As now Roby goes scampering away. And he's wrapped up 15 outs. So Lomax is the dummy half. What will he do? He's going to go down the short side. Surinan's going to feed the kick in. He's picked up. And eventually they're going to be tackled behind the line. So Surinan's kick was good enough. And it's a goal line restart. Well, Johnny Lomax there taking the short side. Siridan, it ricochets off Cross and Dupree. Brody Croft taking no chances whatsoever. Just dots that ball down and build a bit more pressure. You just get a sense that Saints will fancy this, this moment, this period of time here. So Saints on top in the metres gain, but they need points, not metres at the moment. And they are now 35 away with a full set in the tank. What can they do with it as they race out on Bell? Akers was quickly Dude, off the line there. Move, Alex, Sam, Oliver. We're, we're Center field. Wells being to the line, gets it away. Better. 
but still Salford hold their ground. Hatcher again, claiming for uh, holding the tackle. Here now the ball moved across the field. Surinam fires it out wide. Davis is wrapped up by Watkins. And the ball played 15 away. And swing it centre field here now across the Roby finds Lomax. Burgess is raced out. They're going to try and kick him behind. And I think the idea there was perfect. The kick, though, was just lacking a couple of metres. Makinson was unmarked on the touchline, but they couldn't find him. Yeah, a fraction too short. Let's pay Salford credit in defence there when the ball was moved from one side of the field to the other. They didn't really look stretched, they didn't look threatened. Play on, two, play on, play on. Really scruffy play of the ball. Here's the kick again, just lacking the that right idea, Mark, distance. Yeah. It was the right, but now there could be a break for Akers, who had support with him. But the tackle was good enough. And now here comes Croft, he's looking for the 40-20, he thumps it downfield if he gets a good bounce, but it's kicked towards the try line. Now he wants it to stop, and it's just going to roll a metre too far. And Saints will get a seven tackle, 20 metre restart. Croft annoyed with himself. But again, the idea right this time, too much on the kick. I don't think so, Mark. I think they were struggling for metres to kick that ball. Look what it does. It allows them to get set as one line. Say, Helens have got to get all the way back behind the ball. And they just buy a bit of land, knowing that they're 12-0 up with nine minutes to go. I didn't think it was a bad play at all. Saints have it. Nine left first half here. Two. Salford Move. leading courtesy of Seven tries left. from Brody Croft and Ryan Briley inside the opening 17 minutes here. As up the middle go up St Helens. Winfield off the bench. He's Bell again, gets it away to Dodd, finds Surinan. Croft all over him, but he flicks the pass away to Bell. Finds Wellsby looking for an offload, nobody there. Wells, we didn't want to risk the pass, as Roby does well to keep hold of the ball. He goes down, but he wasn't tackled, so he bounces back up again. And this is the last one. Saints, close. Can they get over the line? Quick pass, here's Surinan. Surinan flicks it away, chance here. And they're over. Bell on the end of it. Surinan with a flick pass. St. Helens needed a try. And they get one, much to the light. And this crowd in a totally wicked stadium. They sure do, but it was all about the build-up and all about the influential skipper in James Roby refusing to be put down, getting rid of players, getting back up, making more metres. Curtis Sirenham with a beautiful offload, but here's the break from Roby, gets in between Gerrard, isn't quite put down by Stone, keeps going, gets another 10 or so metres, a hard line from Curtis Sirenham, wonderful hands from Wellsby too. And James Bell slides over for his first try of the season. He's been an ever-present as Bell. And what a moment, what a time to score. Well, he's become a very important player, hasn't he, for St Helens. Big smile for him, the Scotland international. He just brings so much energy, man. So much ball movement, too. Well, he's tough and he's got good hands, but it was Roby's break. Yeah. The evergreen James Roby. That what holds his side off the canvas here and right back into this contest. Summed up perfectly, yeah. Another try for Salford. And this crowd have been very, very worried indeed. Sometimes you need your big players to step up in key parts of the game. James Roby's run there. Superb. Making some with a kick then to narrow it to six, and he does just that. And with just under seven to go to the break, Saints are back in this game. Well, he's been doing this for years now, 20 years. This man has been threatening in and around the rock, causing all sorts of chaos and havoc. And at 37 years young, he's there again. Sirudan, wonderful offload, and James Bell, knowing that his back rower can do that. Delight for him, delight for Saints. And delight for the fans as well. A lot of youngsters here today. Enjoying the sunshine, enjoying their rugby league. And the contest is well and truly back on. And Saints now will consider they've got plenty of time to be level at the break. Jake Winfield does there well. Three people on, spins him round. 
It's a knock on, no. He just it doesn't is. regain his feet in time. He does everything so well, rides the collision. Just wanted to play that ball too quick. He has to regain his feet. It's a big error. Yeah, he's almost used the ball to get himself off the ground, hasn't he? And hasn't played it correctly. No complaints about that. And Salford now have got a little bit of bonus territory here. It's an important set, this. He goes up the middle. We saw the playoffs here last year that Lomax kicked a drop goal, didn't he, right on half time. I don't think Salford will be thinking about the one pointer yet, but they'd like a comfort blanket of another score if they could. And they're 20 away. Nice and quick oh, in the comes to Snead. Snead goes short. Stone with a big step. Can he get the ball away? He's trying. He's still going, Stone, and he will get it away. Finds Akers now. Akers takes on the line. He's wrapped up 10 away. Big moments here in this contest. Akers will play the ball. It fires to Snead now. He'll go back, and it's put down, and a chance wasted here. Lomax will play on. And the tackle made, 15 away. And the set restarts, and this will be the zero tackle. There it is, it just felt a little bit forced, didn't it? A little bit too tight, the angle there. Yeah, so the bullet of the pass as well, Dupree can't take it in. Chance gone begging for Salford, relief for Saints. Four minutes left of this first half. And one score separates the two sides. So Saints have it, just short of the halfway line. Here's Bell, the try scorer. Short pass. Well, oh, that's surely a knock on. And the referee pulls play back. Bell was chancing his arm. And again, as we just said at the other end with Salford, the pass just looked a little bit too tight. Well, it looks like he came off Hackers first. Good to see another angle. Yeah. Akers' his left arm, I think, gets that. I think Salford have been lucky there. Yeah, we've got that. We've got that to Wingfield feeling hard done to. Right the turnover, now. centre field. Let's have another look at this. Watch Akers' his left arm there. Let's go, cut down. Let's go. And you head in. Uh, head in. Tight. Head in, come on. Shot clock off. Salford again. Taking Out. advantage. We mentioned earlier Alex Wormsley had gone off for a head injury assessment. He has passed oh. that, so he's Woo. free to come back on, oh. on. Which is good news for St Helens and Paul Wellens. Two movement rule. Great hold. Hackers throws his arms up, wants the ball quicker. Partington carries. Bird. 35 oh, out now. Wait, Joe. Briley and Croft are to the right, and that's where they're going to go now. Here is Croft, takes on the line, wrapped up. Roby involved again. Ball now centre field, short pass taken in, and that's going to be a forward pass. So the errors are just starting to come now. The faces are getting a little bit redder, the bodies are getting a bit tired, and the errors are starting to creep in. Well, maybe that's a sign of the conditions, Mark, there. Partington, we'll take a, we'll take a, a short pass to Gerrard, it's deemed to be forward. In the last three or four minutes have just got a bit scruffy towards the end of this first half. Error after error. Let's go, pat down. Let's go, pat down. Heads in. OK, shot clock off, ball in. Gerrard on the end of the pass, but the pass was forward, oh. so Saints Move will get there. a pass. chance to get out of their own end here, can they? Create another opportunity, maybe to level things up before half time. But Salford, as it stands, have the advantage. Bell moves it along the line. McCarthy Scarsbrook carries over the 40 metre line. Roby busy, gets it away. They're looking to attack down the left. Surinan this time can't provide the offload. So he's wrapped up. The ball now centre field. It is Lomax. Can he get the pass to Wellsby? He does, but look at the red shirts flooding around in there. They're gambling a little bit, Salford, but they're reading the play well and they're making their tackles. Last one. They need to get a kick away here. 
Briley coming across to the touchline will get it and he knows what's coming. And it was Batchel who chopped him down where he caught it. Yeah, another good take there from Briley under pressure from Batchelor. He's been safe all afternoon, that man there. Yes. Full back. He knows he's got to keep his eye on the ball. He knows there's a what, 17 stone back rower coming to whack him down. He'd be a full back, eh? Working its way forward. Here's Sneed. Sneed flicks it out and it's picked up into the last half minute or so of the half here last one for Salford who need a good kick away here they'll get it away to Sneed who will thump it downfield Wellsby will catch it on the full is there a length of the field special in St Helens Ritson wrapped up again a crunching tackle goes in on him the set restart that won't really help St Helens as Wellsby Runs down the blind alley, then he'll straighten things up. And he's going to be tackled. And there is the hooter. Well, an afternoon that started full of celebration for the St Helens fans has quickly turned quiet. James Roby's special day at the moment, in danger of being spoiled by the Salford Red Devils. Early tries for Croft and Briley have got them in the lead. Bell. Got one back just before the break. But as the players make their way off the field here for a well-earned break, we'll have all the half-time reaction to come with Helen, Sam, Ashton and Danica. But at the break in the Betfred Super League, it's St Helens 6, Salford 12. Lovely day here at the Totally Wicked Stadium, but the champions have got work on their hands. It's Saints 6, Salford Red Devils 12 at the break. The Red Devils looking for a first win in St. Helens, over St. Helens in 43 years. There is the Salford dressing room. They look pretty calm and collected, leading by six. Whereas in the St. Helens dressing room, they know they've got to improve. And Johnny Lomax is laying the law down in that dressing room at the moment. Lovely day here, and we've got more league on four coming up Saturday, 29th of July, one o'clock kickoff. Wigan against Lee. Lee flying at the moment. They're in the top six, looking to consolidate their place in the playoffs. That'll be live on Channel 4, Saturday, 29th of July. Kyle Amor, former St Helens star, alongside us here this afternoon as ever. And Kyle, your former teammates have got some work to do. You certainly have. They seem to be struggling at the moment in this game, completing around 60%. The same was last week over in Catalan, and we saw how that second half almost got blitzed away from the St Helens. Alex Wormsy there, back onto the field. He'll try and add a bit of power and a bit of punch up front. Up at Salford. Largely the better side in that first half, it has to be said. It promises to be a crack of this next 40 minutes. Which way will it go? Well, we'll get to find out. Yeah, second half then of the Betfred Super League clash between St Helens and Salford about to get underway. A record breaking day for James Roby. His 532nd St Helens appearance. He's hit become the, clean, the club's leading appearance maker. Blood on the face. There'll be more blood, sweat and tears required if St Helens are going to turn this one around. The Saints restart then. Salford with first use of the ball. And they'll start ten off their own line. Mackers in at dummy half as they feign to move the ball quickly here. Look, for us, St Helens were off it first half, Kyle, but they're only six behind and they're very much in this game. The Salford are attacking again, out wide, they'll move it forward. And the guys Pitside alluded to there, they've made more metres than Saints, uh, than Salford, and there's an error there from Costello. If St. Helens can hold that ball, get that completion rate up higher, and perhaps land on a few more tackles, 
and I've no doubt that they've got it within their arsenal to put a couple of scores on the board. But that soft error there from Costello just allows Salford to be put under pressure inside the opening minute of the game. Uh, sorry, the second okay, half. Boys, and a scrum play, Let's 30 go, metres man, out. And a big chance for St Helens in, James. to level things up here. Off. Big crowd enjoying the sunshine. Hey! As Roby's met and almost lost that coming out of the base of the scrum there. The hey! pre was all Oof. over him. Go on. Only man, Wall no now square. goes forward, taken in by Two. St Helens, looking Two. to lay a platform Two. early on here. Three Roby will get the ball away and it comes across now. And Saints have got bodies in motion. They're trying to get Siren and over the top there, but Croft got him round the legs. Much needed tackle. And St Helens coming forward now. Here's Wormsley. Refreshed after the break, he's rumbling forward, looking for his 50th try for the club. But not on that occasion. We're going to go now to that short side. Ball coming back across the field. Angled run, his tackle, 10 away. Saints last one. They're going to come to Lomax now. Lomax, short pass, good tackle pass, and they'll reach out and score. Serenade is over. And Saints do score first in the second half. Lovely way to truck that pass, and Surinan just too big and too strong. Saints are back within two. Certainly are, and it all came about of that error over the far side of the field. Curtis Surinan getting his first try of the season for St. Helens. And it's Johnny Lomax just supplying a lovely pass. The timing of it digs in, skips, goes up. Is it Surinan there? Dion Cross can't deal with him. Brody Croft. He's done everything so right in, in Curtis Siren in defending him. But Johnny Lomax, his little skip just pulls him in. And the short pass and the size of the man in Curtis Siridan is too much for Cross to handle. And it's a huge score for Saints. Been a fine signing, hasn't he? Curtis Siridan for St Helens. And a chance now. To, uh, I think they've missed Curtis Siridan. Back from a three-game ban. He's a huge, huge athlete. And he's so threatening near the line. You saw his offload creating that first try for James Bell. And this time he just does it all himself. And Makinson turn the four into six. A few war wounds there, isn't he, on the side of his face, Tommy Makinson. And his eyes firmly on the post in front of him now as he sends a kick but he's got that badly wrong and that could be crucial at the end of this one Saints remain two behind but first objective done get the first point second half Johnny Lomax there orchestrating that try his eighth try assist for the 32 year old Lomax Callum, Siren, the, yeah? the beneficiary the it's a two point ball game game on it is game on Surinan with the points and a high restart comes towards the touchline. Ritson gathers, gets it away to Wormsley. Wormsley with another two, determined three, carry gets the set off to a good start. And Salford at 12 0 look comfortable now. Don't look quite so comfortable, two, poor all his team. Roby oh, gets it away, carried forward. Big collision there. He raised his arm there, McCarthy Scarsbrook. We'll have another look at that. There were no immediate complaints. Lomax gets it. Let's have another look, Carl. What did you make of this one? I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. It's a head on head. That was bumpers up. There's no foul play in that. It's a good old tough carry. And uh, I think he's got the bang on the head, McCarthy Scarsbrook. And he's going to have to come off. Best. So he is coming Hold off. Here. Look at that. Gallon, Gallon! It's like he split his head there. He's going off the field. It was a big contact. It was. And oh, the there's a better kick. And kick. Bradley did really well to gather that. Oh, they were in trouble. The white shirts were flooding in there. You just see McCarthy's guards. Oh, was a looping pass, and oh. that is a disaster. Absolute disaster. Lomax has grounded it, and St Helens have been gifted.
right place, right time. St. Helens lead by 40 points to 12. Well, the game's just flipped well and truly on its head. And it's been Salford's own undoing. The kick from Dodd. He wanted the bounce. He got the bounce. Williams had turned inside out. Briley there. But then Williams, I don't know what on earth he was thinking here. This play is never on. He puts Burgess under far too much pressure. Tommy Makinson reads it so, so well. And Lomax, well, he's just dragged his side right back into this game, Mark. That's criminal from Williams. Not a lot Burgess could do. And the white shirts react first. 14 12. You don't get own goals in rugby league, but that was as near to an own try as you'll ever see. 14 points to 12, kick to come here. Two tries in a couple of minutes for St Helens. And the first half that went so wrong has turned around so quickly. Can Makinson this time add the extras? It's a more confident strike, the flags go up. And having me six behind at the break, St Helens find themselves four points to the good, seven points into the second half. Let me just watch this. Any youngster in the game will ever do that. You're putting your side under far too much pressure. It's not even as if the pass was on the money for Burgess, asking far too much. I think the only time that that pass would ever have been deemed acceptable was if you needed a score with about three seconds left for the game to win it. Yeah. But when you're in front, sometimes you just got to roll your sleeves up and you want that one back, Williams. But game not over yet, but they have invited the champions in and they've walked through the open door. You've got an opportunity to come to the champions' own backyard. You haven't won here for 43 years. You're in control. You're in control of the whole game. Just giving away an error that led to a try. That's just not what's wanted or needed, but... The Salford players, they won't matter now. They'll just carry on. Reset, go again. Yeah, George Delaney, the youngster, is into the action. Here now is Wormsley rumbling forward again. Wants a quick play of the ball. Last tackle, this of the set. Dodd has it. He's going to go high. He's going to invite Williams to catch it on his line. Gets underneath it and does well, but... Again, he knew what was coming, the chase was a good one. He had to catch that one, make up for it. As Cross now, and listen to the crowd. This is the part that they really try and lift the players. Oh, and they have done again. Another Salford error. Oh. And this time, they managed to get the ball on their own line. What on earth was in the Salford Cups of tea at half-time? Oh, they can smell blood now, Saints. That's the last tackle done now, at about 15 metres gain. Burgess, the ball just goes over his shoulder. And look where they kick him from, Mark Sneed. And it's straight down the throat of T. Ritz, and he allows it to bounce. He got a nice bounce there, Ritz, and he couldn't quite meet it on the full. But look at this, they're inside the 40 on tackle one. And all of a sudden, Salford are starting to take a few too many punches here. They need to defend themselves in this set. A third try in the second oh, half for St Helens could be a crucial one. And there is the youngster Delaney, highly regarded in these parts. Lomax gets it away, flick pass out wide, Makinson trying to get on the edge. Has to cut back in and take the tackle, he's 10 away. Slow play of the ball, but here comes Saints. And they turn it back for Wormsley, rampaging, gets the ball away off the ground. Another big chance here, flick pass for Makinson! He's over in the corner, and St Helens have got their third try. A blistering start to the second half, and the champions who are 12-0 behind, now lead by 20 points to 12. It's a Makinson special. It sure is. But again, I've got to highlight Jack Wellsby in the build-up to this play. He just drops Alex Wormsley underneath him, puts big man on little man. I had a little goal out before for forcing an offload, but this time he gets it right. Wellsby just using Wormsley's size, gets the top of Sneed, allows that offload to get away. Popawate with a bit of a dance in the air. Burge is too interested, and Makinson doing what he's been doing all his career, and that's finishing in the tightest of spaces. Credit the big man here.
a measured offload that time. Hopawate with finesse and Makinson, new beauty. And crucially there, look at the passion from Tommy Makinson. He's pretty happy. Great finish from him. And crucially in the build-up to that, warms his arm, didn't touch the floor, which meant he was allowed to pass it. And that leads to the try. And what a finish it was. We'll talk about that. Three tries in the space of 11 minutes. And Salford have just been hit by a juggernaut. Sirenen, Lomax, Makinson. Errors from Salford have been punished here, as you would expect, by a team that has won the last four grand finals. Makinson looking to make it a ten-point lead here. Looking to convert his own try. Sends it on the way. Oh, he's nailed it. What a kick that is from Tommy Makinson. 22 unanswered points either side of half time and this a beautiful finish a beautiful pass a beautiful try great center play there Hopawate holds Costello up that little jump in the air the, the step off the left foot Burgess just gets slightly turned in Makinson holds his chalk tackle made 15 off the Saints line now Salford not been down this end at all with ball in hand. They need maybe a break from St Helens here, but Saints not looking in the mood as Wormsley again. His reintroduction has been key. It's a real go forward now for Saints to build on the back of, and they are building off the back of it. Lomax floods through the middle now. They're just running harder, Mark, playing quicker. And Salford at the moment, Wormsley with his second carry of the set. He just can't cope. We heard from Ryan Bradley had a kick off. As he might have to take this high Jim, kick here. They're going to attack Williams, Jim. who comes in off the wing. Oh, he's dropped it! He's dropped it, and he's going to be another chance. St Helens with a set restart. The line busted. There's a player down off the ball here. Salford imploding in front of our very eyes. Well, Ryan Bradley said had a kick off. We've got to run harder and tackle harder than St Helens. And second half, that is not happening. There's a player down there. And this was involved in the kick chase here. I think Salford are unhappy. I think Atkin just gets in the way of Syridan on that kick chase and there's just a coming together for Reese Williams. You just see here Syridan. Just runs into the back of Atkin there. Reese Williams can't take that ball in. I'm interested to see what the referee does here. Well, they've played on, they've had another play, haven't they? So, I'm not sure there's an awful lot he can do. That kid. Mm. I thought at first sight, Syridan doesn't take his eyes off the ball, but... Well, Atkin's got to leave the field, he's got a green card. He's got to leave the field now because play had to stop. That's adding insult to injury, so he's off the field now for two minutes. Syridan always looks innocent. But there was a coming together. Atkin is not happy about that. Salford are not happy about it. He's now got to stand on the sideline. And that rule brought in really to stop players from play acting and stopping the game. I don't think he was play acting that no, time. No, he wasn't, but that's why it was brought in, wasn't yeah. it? To stop players time wasting yeah. and try to stop the game. Well, they've got to defend the line with 12. Yeah, Winfield gets some running repairs and a fresh shirt. So the ball now will go forward. Here's Wormsley looking for that 50th St Helens try. Wrapped up a metre away. Roby waits at dummy half. Salford are on the ropes here. And the champion's about to land a knockout blow. Full set from inside. And they'll get a set restart as well. Roby gets it away. They're fighting now. They've got numbers out to the right, St Helens. Salford screaming for reinforcements over on that far side. And that's where Saints will go now. The ball in the hands of Wellsby. Sees the defenders rush out, comes back in. And now he's skipping across the field. And he gets it away to Sirenen. Sirenen tries to step past Watkins, who brings him down. But Salford continue to defend. They need a little bit of luck here. 
for their afternoon could be coming to a really disappointing end. The Saints have it. Roby gets it away now. Dodd, short pass to Lomax, short pass, and they're over. Bachelor with a try. He hoofs the ball into the Saints, finds it jubilation. And Saints are going through the gears now. A slow start, but they're hitting top speed in the second half, and they lead by 14. Well, many people across the game have almost been writing this same side off this year. Yes, they have been up and down, but they are the champions, and champions find a way sometimes. And that is a beautiful ball once again from Johnny Lomax. Nine try assists to his name. Soft pass, double pump, Bachelor just tearing an inside shoulder and has so much work to do in getting past Brealey. And look at the delight, the emotion on the man's face. Well, we mentioned it's been a frustrating start to the season for Bachelor. Injury ruled him out of the World Club Challenge, but he's back now and put him in that kind of position. You're not going to stop him. It's beautiful shape there. Lewis Dodd using big medals as a decoy underneath. Just a catch and pass to Lomax, the halfbacks combined. And Joe Batchelor, what a find he's been. Spent so much of his career, almost half of his career mark in the championship. Now the England international. He's just scored a vital try. Four tries inside 15 minutes. Lakinson looking to add the extras. There's a scoreline threatening the run away from Salford here. The Saints fans enjoying this second half. Oh, they're up by enjoying that kick from Lakinson. No, he got that one wrong. 26 points to 12. And Salford now are in deep trouble. And again, it's the soft hands of Johnny Lomax that creates the try. Yeah, it is. And just a bit of trouble in between Costello and Max Need. Nobody really committing to any runner there. Mom's going to catch on the full. Yeah, right on the back fence. He'll bring it forward. Well, from being 12 0 to the good, as the ball comes free, but again, it's Saints who'll get the decision. Wormsley gets to applaud its off his teammates. Another big collision. to be pulled out of the tackle. Tyler Dupree, I think it was. And that's not what you want, it's not what's needed. The set after points, you want to just try and dictate with your defensive actions, try and leave something on somebody in the right way. But in the blink of an eye, George Delaney crosses over the halfway line. St Helens on a roll. Here is uh, Wingfield, one of a uh, number of players that have uh, spilt a little bit of blood this afternoon. Louis Bold. McCarthy scars looks Bold. back on the sideline. He's been bandaged and he's ready to come back on when needed as Lomax pass bounces up. Williams just couldn't get it. And Davis recovers it. That's one of those. The ball bounces for Williams' way and he's racing down the other end of the field. Sure is, yeah. Look at that meters gain. Well, that's what the guys pitch side mentioned that Saints, even though they had been making errors, but I bet the completion, I can't think of the last time they made an error in the second half. It's a great kick again. Riley's got a catch, he's in goal, so it'll be a seven tackle, 20 meter restart. Salford without Andy Ackers, he's gone for a head injury assessment. So Salford doing it tough at the moment, but they've got the ball back, finally got the ball back. Well, they're doing it tough through their own doing. They've done what Saints did in the first half and just came up with a lot of errors. Penalties as well. King Vuniawawa, he was terrific last week. 132 metres gain in a 35 minute stint at Leeds. One, move, Jake Alex. Salford wait for a win against St Helens. Looks like it's going to go on. They have one here in the Challenge Cup, the year they got to Wembley, they had the wins in the quarter-final and the semi-final on this ground, but they've never beaten St Helens here as Watkins flicks the pass, cross with little room, did well to stay in the field of play. Salford looking to 
Hit back, Atkin looking to get to an edge. They had numbers oh, as well. Go. There. But the uh, St. Helens are offside. Yeah, if Atkin releases that pass, then Hopawate and Makinson are left with a five on two. They're in all sorts of trouble. And a penalty for offside. And Salford, you get the you, you do feel that they have to score. You do. Alex Warms has just come off on the sideline. He's literally collapsed to his knees. A meter over the sideline. He's gassed the big man, but what a stint he's put in after that head injury assessment. There he is, just finally got to his feet. He finally got his shot that he was wanting the cameraman to find him. Here now comes Salford. They've got numbers. Can they execute? Here's Brightly. Oh, the pass oh. is knocked on. The pass is knocked on. And that was Salford's big chance to hit back here. Big, big chance there. He done so well to create the numbers. Ryan Briley, he's got cross, and Reese Williams outside him. Just needed that pass to be a little bit earlier, a bit quicker. And he was certainly in for a score. Yeah, that nine handling errors from Salford, but I think the two you'd be looking at are those two on their own goal line that led directly to two St Helens I tries. Think, I think you're looking at five of them that has came in this in the second half as well, Mark, and that's been the the telling stat. Well, Paul Rowley will look at that and say, look, we've had one visit down that end and we've just really created a chance. Oh, Mark, look, I Can think Paul Rowley, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't even think he'll be thinking that at the moment. I think he'll be absolutely fuming well, that his no, side have just... Because they have completely, completely imploded. They've gone about this second half with such a poor attitude. Well, I wish you good luck when you speak to Paul after the game. Lewis, well done for not playing that. Okay, a holy committed player and now on, coach on his side have put up some good performances it looked for so long here in the first half as though they were putting another one up today but second half it's like they've not come out of the dressing room they've capitulated here tries for Surin and Lomax making some and Batchelor talk about a game of two halves but it's St Helens who are coming home here with a wet sail as Bell takes on the line. He's wrapped up. And he waits. Oh, looks like in the squad today, or in the 17 today, so Roby probably going to have to play the full 18 as the ball has been lost here. And Atkin is racing away and didn't quite have the pace. Atkin. Let's have a look as Salford come forward again. It's all a bit one up at the moment. Vuni Yawa, who made that great run, here is the steal. Great play from Atkin. Yeah, real clever. Chris Atkin just pinching the pocket, the bachelor. Croft. Croft. He oh, spilled it. There. Bachelor redeems himself and dodds away. Don't hold down, and it's just all getting a bit too much for Salford at the moment. Even when they do get the ball in decent position, they can't hang on to it. And Lomax now is probing, looking for more St Helens points. He's been good this afternoon, Johnny Lomax. He's always good. 32 years of age now, Lomax. And continue to excel as... That was a poor error. I don't think Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook anticipated that he was going to even release that pass, and he just has a little look up. Wasn't arriving on it at, with any speed at all. Perhaps wanting Wellsby just to go off on his own run. Scrappy couple of minutes there from both sides. 18 minutes remaining go, for Salford to try and turn this one around. There's uh, Shane Wright, we saw go off earlier on and uh, not a good sign. Looks like he's got the boot on, crutches as well. Salford will be hoping that's not a long-term problem. They lost him for 16 games last year to a hamstring problem, and that looked another serious one. And you wonder if there will be anything to come out of the challenge that led to him getting injured. But there's the ball now, 40 away from St Helens line. Ball now goes out the back. Here's Briley. Briley probing gets it away. Chance here. Great tackle. Great tackle there. Makinson it was who makes it, and look at the reaction from the St Helens players. That might just be Salford's best chance gone. Patient, patient, patient. Tommy Makinson, he just holds his line, starts backing off, and as soon as Brealey passes that ball to Burgess, 
He knows he just has to hit the afterburners and he does so well. Turnover, middle. Don't forget more live Super League action coming your way on Channel 4, Saturday 29th of July, 1 o'clock start, Wigan against Lee. Both right, sides right. in the top six. Louis, let's Enjoy go, your summer. On. We'll be back crack of later on. on in July. Move and all the way through way. the playoffs as well. Oh, Big local derby to get things going when we're back one. here Quick with League on Tyler. four. Come on. Two. Saints come on, keep making their way forward now. Wait, wait. Tally Lee's Tally about to come back on for there. You're good now, you're good now. Youngster Delaney carries forward again. Doesn't he carry the ball well? George Delaney. Such good leg speed. That's why the 19-year-old's highly thought of. And that was his last carry. He goes racing off to the sideline. As Watkins makes the tackle but doesn't lock up the ball. Sirenen comes forward again. He's been busy today. He's been good, Curtis Sirenen. Got the try, didn't he, at the start of the second half. And it was his offload that led to that first try as well. And Saints so rumbling forward, last one. Back all the way, 10 metres, get over him. Go, go. Ball here with Luis. Lomax Luis. goes high. Briley should catch this. Look Steps at away, chance. and he's trapped in goal. He's trapped in goal. Everything St Helens are touching at the moment. He's turning the goal. They've got the beat between the teeth, Mark. Just look at the effort. It's not a kick chase, it's a kick sprint. Makinson first on the scene, and then Bachelor just to make sure. Those are great pitches to see from your side. It's effort and energy, it requires no skill. But the reward for it is more pressure, more pressure for Salford to deal with. Sneed hammers the ball oh, down penalty. the field. What's he given here? Offside? No, he took longer than 30 seconds to take the drop goal. The dropout, sorry. The shot clock had gone. Well, it's, it's not a often penalty. you see that, no. but that's why. As James Roby says, oh, we're going to run it. Let's keep the pressure on here. You have to get rid of the ball inside of 30 seconds. And he took too long, so it's a penalty. I think the only thing that would top off this St Helens second half performance is if the record breaker Roby got over for a try of his own as well, and he's got it five away. And a look now to spread it across. They move it to Wellsby. Salford race out, but again, don't lock up the ball. It's back to Dodd now. Dodd just stands and almost encouraging Salford to come out of the line and tackle him. Roby 10 metres away. Gonna go short side here. Wellsby turns it back underneath the angled run. A determined carry from Davis is brought down a couple of meters away. Roby now looks, goes short. They're over the line, but they're not gonna get it down. Better defense this time denies McCarthy's Garsbrook. We'll play it 10 meters away. Saints looking to put the icing on the cake. And the ball now working its way across the field. Good defence, last one. Matt. Got him Wellsby. Gets it to Roby, dribbles the kick in. It's put down. Was it ground in? It was. And they've got the ball just in the field of play, Salford. And look where they've got to carry the ball from. Castello meeting a welcome committee of Lees and Roby and Bachelor out on that far side. And these are tough carries. The work from market, the effort in and around the next two or three to get the offload away. Beautiful skill, Williams. You go back to that Williams pass on his own line, and that was the moment it all started going wrong for Salford. Here's Croft down the short side, gets it away. Williams will carry it. He's tackled 25 out from his own try line. And Salford. Looking now, getting more desperate, working the ball across to that left-hand edge. Tackle by just short of halfway. They've done well to get up there from where they started the set. And now they need a kick from Sneed, who's just going to hoist it long. Ritson waits, looking up, catches it on the full. And he will bring it back now. And again, he's on the end of a strong challenge. Big contact there. What a guy you are. You didn't miss him. You didn't. St Helens 
are 12 Move minutes man, away. A much needed win for them. Oh, they lost half of their opening King 10 back. Super League matches. And what about that as well? We've mentioned him a number of times as James Rolby puts Look a kick the into the corner. If this stays in the field of play, Brightley's in trouble. Oh. And the ball just skipped away. Well, it was a yard too strong. Roby on appearance, 5-3-2 for St Helens, can't believe it. And it's all, all probability, it's going to be an 80-minute performance from him. And that just sums up the man's commitment to this club, his fitness levels, the way he plays the game. Anybody who's ever worked in and around him will know that he's just a leader, a leader of men all over the field, and he deserves all the accolades he gets. Messing about, I'm not sure about that there on the floor from Salford, but frustrations may be boiling over. They were 12 0 up with eight minutes to go to the break, and now they trail by 26 points to 12. And second half, they've been outplayed by the champions. Well, they've been strangled, Mark. Look not at very the often. Line speed. And again, it's just suffocating. It is, Dupree it? does do well. But he couldn't find an offload. And he'll fall to the ground. It's another tough afternoon out in St Helens. For Salford, who are without Andy Ackers. And now the chip over the top. Now can Sneed regather it? Bounced away from him. Briley will pick it up. He gets it away. Chance here of a counter attacking try. They'll go forward. Salford, they need to find an offload. They do find an offload, but the interception is on. And now Surinan's going the other way. And he looks for a pass and he finds a pass. Tackle made. End to end stuff here. But that Ackers fell. Head injury assessment will have implications next weekend in the Challenge Cup. He'll be unavailable. As Salford take on Huddersfield next week. Yeah, it's a huge game. Huge, huge game. Huddersfield, of course, on the back of a, another loss. Eyebrows raised about what's happening over at the Giants. Wormsley carries forward again. Well, Salford chanced their arm there, but they couldn't quite find the pass at the end of the move. Wellsby just stops, puts the brakes on. You just get a feeling that there's another try for the men in the red V. So is. Last one, though, here. Roby's looking around him. Lomax to his right. They look like they've got a numerical advantage here. Lomax is going to put it high. The kick caught in the field of play. Well, just did well under pressure. Yeah. Back pedaling, arm stretched at full. Takes that ball. But again, the game management from St. Helens in this second half has just literally meant that it's been deja vu for the Salford Red Devils. Coming away from difficult positions like this, but they move the ball well and they've got a chance. Well, they have got a chance. This would be a special move as Williams is on the outside. Wellsby comes, gives it to, it's a forward pass. It's a forward pass. They had so long to give the pass. And in the end, Neil Cross looks at the touch judge. We were right in line with that, Kyle. It looked forward to me. Yeah. Dion Cross there holds it, and you just see the ball there. The fact that Williams has to stretch his right arm out, they're always so difficult to tell. Looking at them on a replay. Probably... That there probably just sums up Salford in the second half. Yeah, Williams denied there, but these are the mistakes that have changed the game. Burgess, who couldn't take that ball on his own line, and then and this, then this pass from Williams, an absolute howler. It led to the Lomax try, and that puts St Helens in front, and we have to say, from that moment on, they've not taken a backward step. Yeah. And St Helens are going to pick up win number six. Still way off the leaders' Warrington at the moment, but plenty of... Chances to close the gap from here on in. Two. Movement, Matt. We're here. The second half performance Great. that will please Paul Wellens Great. certainly much more than that first 40 minutes would have done today. Well, we're still at that stage of the season, Mark, where you just need to get wins on the board. We are crossing into the, the sort of summer side of it where you're looking for performance and you're looking for building good habits, good momentum. At this stage, you just feel that getting another two points will be very, very important for Paul Wallen's men. 
Here's Bell. Bell sidesteps his way into the 20. Eventually wrestled to the ground. Last one. He gets the ball away. Dodd will step up the kick. Williams comes to get it, catches this one, but he could be going in goal. They roll him over the line. Great strength from Sirenan. He's been outstanding today. He's, He's been Sirenan. superb, yeah. Such an athletic big man, light on his feet as well, but can do the tough stuff here. Just doesn't allow Reese Williams to find the floor. Just look how he hits, holds, keeps his legs going, okay, and has the upper body strength to throw him over. Just good technique, isn't it? Smart player. They've gone short here, it's gone the 10. And the ball dropped by Saints, and I think that is going to be a Salford ball, is it? Let's see what Chris Kendall judges here. And he says oh, Williams nice. touched it. So that Williams did get a hand on it. Let's have a look. Yeah, did just touch it. And Saints will get another opportunity with six minutes to go here. It's been a great down. afternoon, has it, for Bruce Williams. What can Saints do? Oh, Roby, he's made an error, a bit of it. Well, there's one for the collector's book. A knock book. on. You don't often see that. And he's protesting that he didn't knock it on, so that he maybe hit his foot. Mm -hmm. They've got to give him a breeze up. Afternoon done, so it won't quite be 80 minutes for James Roby on his 532nd St Helens appearance. As Williams makes his way forward, it's been a great afternoon for that man. One I'm sure he and his family are incredibly proud of, and so they should be as well. A Super League great. Sure is, James Roby. All-time Super League appearances, taking over Kevin Sinfield last June. Now taking over Kel Kosler for the all-time Saints appearances. Six grand final wins, two World Club challenges, eight league leaders' shields, four challenge cups, seven times Dream Team, and a Man of Steel as well. That's not a bad knock. Let's go, boys. It's a steady career, isn't it? And just for his reward, he can have the last four and a half minutes in. Out. Not sure. I'm sure he'll be getting. Hung up on the wall at home in the Roby household. Tyler! Saints come forward again. Sidestepping his way forward. He'll always ask questions. He'll always carry. He offloads it as well. Good work there. Now they're going through the middle. Saints looking to wrap this one up in style. They're 10 metres out. The ball will swing across. Dodd now just drops it back on the angle. Carried forward. Eight metres away. Infield in at dummy half, gets the ball away and they put it down. Warms, he thought that was going to be his 50th for St Helens. Right, Kyle Amor, let's get your bet Fred player of the match this afternoon. Oh, well, look, I think there's been a, a lot of good performances out there. I think Curtis Sirridan's had a huge influence in this game, as Joe Batchelor has, but, you know, the man that just almost helped flipped the game on its head in that second half. Two try assists and a try himself is that man there. The number six for St. Helens, Johnny Lomax, an incredible game from the 32-year-old. At the heartbeat of everything good, he's had a terrific season in a side that's been a bit up and down. It's not too often you can raise an eyebrow at Johnny and say he hasn't competed or tried to influence the game, and he certainly had a huge impact today. Yeah, the Betford player of the match, Johnny Lomax, another outstanding performance from him. As the ball works its way out wide to the Salford left hand Two. side. Movement will! Here we are, Jim. Go on. There, As the ball now works its way across. Croft gets it away. It's an error again. Sneed this time. Couldn't take it in. And it's been a second half to forget. Shot clock on. Yeah, it's been as bad as it comes. Paul all his men. First half, I thought they were exceptional. Second half, they just haven't even looked like the same team. But Salford, they are an aspiring club, they are chasing to what is the benchmark. 
But as we always find out, when you're on the way up, it's new levels, new devils. And they have to learn how to win games like this, especially at half-time when you were in the ascendancy. You were controlling the game, and I thought Saints looked a little bit rattled. But second half, they've just shown what, what championship sides do. They're able just to apply pressure and come at you in waves with those three tries inside the first 11 minutes. Just gave it a huge, huge mountain to climb for Salford. Yeah, Holmes' offload was a loose one, but it went backwards. Bell wrapped up. So John Benison as well taking a carry before that. On from the bench is now here. Comes Lomax, gets it away to Leeds. Leeds trying to wrestle his way forward. And the ball coming down the short side here, and a chance to wrap it up. Surinan is chopped down. And now the ball across the field. Lomax gets it away to Wormsley. Wormsley's wrapped up. We go inside the final minute here. And the ball with Salford. And Salford just Move. desperate here Zero. for this clock to tick Go down so they can head Hold. back home to Salford. A disappointing afternoon for the Red Devils, another loose pass on their own line. One. Move, Will, you can't help but feel they have contributed to their own downfall today, but you also have to recognise that St Helens have been brilliant in this second half. As that pass... Is uh, well, another wild offload. Stonewall trundled back to pick it up, but looks up to see a white shirt, and now they're just throwing it anywhere here. Atkin on the end of the big hit, just managed to get away, and they are going to throw it around Salford. They might not be going to get the win, but they're still trying to score points from almost seemingly impossible positions. Another flick pass, though. Wow. <laughs> it is the full-time siren. And Salford's second half capitulation means it's a winning record-breaking day for James Roby. 532nd appearance for this famous club, takes it past Kel Coslett's record. But at half-time, when Saints were 12-6 down, it looked like it was going to be an afternoon of disappointment for the defending champions. But four tries in that second half, Surinan... Lomax making some and Batchelor getting the tries. A little light making some and Lomax were exchanging words there. We'll maybe find out a little bit more about that, and I'm sure we'll hear from the man himself, James Roby. What a day in his illustrious career, what I'm sure he's very proud of. But more importantly, he'll tell you, it's a win for the champions. They've seen off Salford Red Devils. It ends here. St. Helens 26, Salford Red Devils 12.